And welcome back, Nats fans, to another episode of the Dogcast Post Game Show, which is now our last post game show of 2017. Not a happy recap. So many things to talk about. We're going to be here all night. We hope you're here with us, too. I'm Ricky Keeler, along with my partner in crime, uh, co editor Ron Juckett. Ron, you're, before we dive into everything that went on in this game, and there's everything. There's, yeah. What, it, well, what do we take from this game? Well, it could have been worse. Um, when when they blew that lead, when Scherzer blew that lead, uh, you know, I, I th- they could have just rolled over and died. They fought back. I I, I don't know. I, I don't know. They had their chances, but as you said, you know, before we before we went live, I mean. Honestly, this comes down to Jose Lobatone being picked off at first base on a replay that I couldn't tell. They had Wade Davis on the ropes, and we, we'll get into all the controversial stuff. And let's get it out of the way. The controversial stuff has nothing to do with why the Nats lost. So we're not going to make excuses here and say that's the reason why they lost the game. There are many other reasons why they lost the game. Well, we'll get into all that, of course. Feel free to get into the chat room here on the YouTube page. Tweet oh, me. trust me. Trust me, chats. Chat's Wait. pretty, pretty uh, – we'll, we'll read the best of in a minute. We'll definitely get to – we want to just touch on the game before we dive into all the chat questions. So feel free to send us – send a chat here. Uh, tweet me on Twitter, at District on Deck, at Rickinator555. We do want to hear from you. And before we start going to the totals, we'll do this at the end too. Thank you, all of you, for tuning in this season. Uh, it's been so much fun to do all these games, so much fun to talk to you after every game, win or lose. Uh, so, again, thank you for uh, being a part of this. We definitely all appreciate it. We wouldn't have done all every game this year if it weren't for you guys. Oh, my goodness, no. All right, so let's go to the totals. Cubs get nine runs and nine hits, no errors. The Nats get eight runs, 14 hits, two errors. Ron, I want you to guess who got the win for the Cubs. Uh, was, <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. They never blew the lead again. So my guess is it's going to be uh, Hendricks, right? No. no. Oh. Hendricks left after four. After four. Brian Dunsing, who went two-thirds of an inning with 19 pitches, gets the win. Max Scherzer, who had a terrible fifth inning. Oh, my God. Takes the loss. One inning, two earned runs, four total, three hits, one strikeout, one walk, 28 pitches, 20 strikes. And Wade Davis, and you got to give this guy a lot of credit. Hadn't thrown more than 34 pitches all season. Looks like the starter that he used to be. Two and a third, one run, two hits, three strikeouts, two walks, 44 pitches. Oh, my goodness. 23 strikes. His season high was 34 coming in. And he gets the save, the third of the postseason. So the Cubs move on. They'll play the Dodgers Saturday night, 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock. It'll be John Lackey against Clayton Kershaw. So I'll just say right now, if the Dodgers don't win game one, they should forfeit the series. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Absolutely. I, I'm sure my, my pals at Cubby's crib would uh, agree with me on that one. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let's get into this. Um, no, read out loud most of what's going on in, in the chat. All right. Uh, I want to try as best as we can to go chronologically through everything because there's so much that went on. And it starts, I think, let's start with Gio Gonzalez, who did not have his breaking ball working for most of this game. He somehow manages to get one, only give up one run in that first inning. It looked like they were going to give up four or five. Yeah, I thought the game was over right then because he just couldn't get anything over. Then the Nats hand him a four to one lead thanks to Daniel Murphy hitting a home run in the first pitch. Michael Taylor, who absolutely uh, made that place go crazy, three run shot. He's the first player to hit four plus RBIs in back to back postseason games. So at least they learned something about him in this postseason. But Gio gave two of those runs back. And while the Nats didn't lose the game on right there, it comes down to at what point was Dusty going to take Gio out of that game? Because he clearly didn't have it mentally. He didn't have it physically. He looked like the guy that last year was talking to himself, couldn't find his pitches, and had no command. So where was Dusty to bring in Matt Albers, who was probably their, outside of Sean Doolittle and Ryan Madsen, probably their best pitcher of the night? Yep. I, you know, he should, Gio should be gone after two. We never yeah, saw Tanner Roark in the entire series. You know, that would have been who I would have gone with. 
right out, or right out of the gate because you probably could have gotten three innings out of him. Um, it just just very frustrating all the way around. But yeah, I, after the second, it was pretty clear that Gio wasn't going to be able to do it. No, not at all. And at that point, you wondered, okay, how how is Dusty going to get through this game? They go to Matt Albers in the fourth inning, and Albers was absolutely fantastic. As you will see, I'll show it. I tried to keep score. It did not go very well. Uh, so I'm doing the best, the best I can. Uh, but Albers got a one, two, three, fourth inning, and you're thinking, all right, you got a four, three game. Here comes Max Scherzer. He's looking pumped. The place is crazy. Gets Chris Bryant, gets Anthony Rizzo. And then the crazy stuff happens. And then and then the bottom just dropped right out. Infield hit Contreras. Blue base hit for Zobrist. Two run double down the line for Russell. They walk Hayward, which is probably the smart idea, load the bases. And then Javi Baez strikes out. Ball gets away from Weeders. Weeders then throws it away. Runner does come around to score, makes it six to four, and Joe Posnanski and a couple people tweeted this. The ump should have looked at it because Javi Baez hit Matt Weeders with the backswing. So that that ending continues. Tommy Lastella then reaches on a catcher's interference. So add insult to injury to Matt Weeders' bad fifth inning. John Jay then gets hit by a pitch. That leads to a run. And before you know it, the Cubs are up eight to four before you could blink. And it's a set. I mean, you hate to blame a guy that wants to take the ball. But for a guy that hasn't won a postseason game in a long time, it's going to take a lot to get, as we talk about Steven Strasburg's legacy changing after yesterday, sad to say this kind of is a bad mark on Max Scherzer's legacy. It's unfortunate. Well, yeah, especially after all the commotion and hubbub that went into game four, which they, you know, dominant performance. And Scherzer, they, Scherzer should never have pitched. He should never have pitched. He hasn't been healthy. I mean, they held him to game three for a reason. Again, that, that if you're going to use a starter, you should have used Roark, who hadn't pitched in a week. Was he going to do any worse than what we saw after two outs? You know, they needed Scherzer to go out there and pitch two, three innings. And he just – I don't know what it was, but, you know, we, we've seen starters go. I mean, look, at even Quintana did okay. Yeah. Not great. Not great, mm. but better than Scherzer. That's not saying much. That's true. <laughs> but that fifth inning, I, I had a lot of tweets during the fifth inning. That looked like a mentally small team in the fifth inning. It looked like a team that thought back to last year, thought back to 2012, which thank God the game didn't end 9-7. to seven. Yeah. I mean, at least it ended 9-8. to eight, But uh, I'm going to give the Nats a lot of credit. And I still think there's blame to go around. And I'll, I'll say it right now, I still call this a failure. But – down nine to four, uh, they fought back really hard and made this extremely tough on the Cubs. I mean, they took it to Chicago right out of the gate. You had a sixth inning down nine to four. You get the Zimmerman eight to four. You get the Zimmerman walk to make it nine to eight to five. And Worth scores in the wild pitch. By the way, any of you that listen to this later that booed Jason Worth, you should be ashamed of yourself. Absolutely. Have that be the last time he gets up, one of the last times he bats in that ballpark, and you boo him. Even he had one of his best games of the season. Shame on you. I'm going to leave it at that because that, that got me really irate tonight. Uh, then Murphy gets just misses a home run, gets a double off the wall, makes it 8-6. to six. You think they got a shot, and the Cubs get one back. But still, we'll dive into all the particulars. But, Ron, I know you mentioned it. That you, you view this not as a failure because of the way they fought back. They fought back. If, you know, and when, when the implosion came in the fifth, if they had rolled over and played dead, um, yeah, it would have been a failure. But they, but they played. They just kind of ran out of outs, and that game was decided on a, on a replay, on a questionable replay call, because they had Davis on the ropes in the eighth. I mean, Jose Lobaton was actually going to be the hero, and uh, and then he he was picked off. You know, which is a smart play by Contreras to do it, but he's, he's you know, known for that. But if the ball goes into right field, the game is tied. And it's just it's just a matter of inches. The Nats just never get these breaks in these kind of games, and you wonder when they're ever going to get those breaks because 
it just hasn't happened. I mean, you look at the seventh inning. Chris Bryant grounds into third, and John Jay clearly goes at Daniel Murphy's leg and leg whips him. I mean, by the letter of the rule on the slide rule, shouldn't John Jay be out? Even though his hand did reach the bag? Right. I mean, that's why they put that rule in place. Nats tried to challenge it, which, give him credit, after Dusty wasted a horrible challenge in the first inning on oh, the that, that was atrocious. That was absolutely atrocious. At least he got that right. But that call stands, and you go to the eighth inning. Somebody please tell me, and if you're a Cub fan and you're here, tell me, where the heck was there conclusive evidence that Jose Lobaton was out? It took two minutes to look at that call, and there should be a time limit on replay reviews where if you can't determine evidence after a minute or a minute and a half at the most, it stands because that's ridiculous. Not even Ron Darling saw any conclusive evidence. And there. Darling was the one saying he was out and didn't say any conclusive evidence. I know a lot of you Nats fans had problems with Darling. I like Darling personally. Yeah, I, I have no problem with Darling. All right, let's dive into the chat. We've done a lot of stuff. All right, go ahead. Um, what do we got? Yeah, most of it you really can't read. Give me the stuff I can read. Um, well, let's just go through this. Everyone you wanted to wake the bats to wake up tonight did. Turner had a good game. Worth had a good game. Let me run through the line on them. I'll do that while you look at read, at reading yeah, at questions in the chat. At readable questions. Yeah, we'll I, don't get to, many, I don't think there are many questions tonight. All right. We'll get to readable comments. And we'll, we'll, we'll get into a little bit of the future uh, as well. Of course, it's also almost 1 a.m., so keep that in mind as we do this. Uh, Turner, two for six. Worth, two for four. Harper, two for four. I'm sorry. The GOAT has to be Ryan Zimmerman. 0 for 4, three strikeouts, left seven on base. And it's a shame because he, I'm not going to bring up those stats because he got past those stats. It was the worst game of the worst game of the series. And it cost him. He was the only player in the op, in the starting lineup without a hit. Wow. Even Matt Weeders got two hits. Yeah. And he had a butt hit. I mean, Matt Weeders looked like the hero for about four innings. They turned into the goat again. All right. I, I'm not going to read the personal comments here. I'm going to start with Judo's. Max Scherzer and Matt Wieters basically gave the game to the Cubs. Yeah, I, I really that, that was a decisive inning. They fought back like hell, but but that was just a bridge too far. The Cubs didn't deserve to win, but the Nats deserved to lose. No, you know, um, I, I disagree that the Cubs didn't deserve to win. When, when Davis goes and gets you seven outs, when he had nothing on his arm, I mean, we, knew, we figured this would be a five-game set. And not one team won more than one game in a row. I mean, it's you know, two pretty much even teams. And in the end, it was decided by a run. What, what did you say? 13, this is what, 14 out of the last 19 it's meetings? Fifth, now, it's now 15 out of the last 19. Chris Lacey says, what a wild game. Uh, well, let, me, let me address that point. I know Joe Madden tried like heck to lose this game. <laughs> he tried. He really tried, and he's tried to lose the last couple of big games, and for some reason, his luck works. And meanwhile, one of the nicest managers can't get a break. And it it, it has to be frustrating to Dusty that what has he got to do to get a big win in a series? Because it's But you can't say the Cubs didn't deserve to win. Wade Davis, like Ron said, was fantastic uh, for considering pitching 11 pitches yesterday and throwing 40, 44 today. I mean, you got to give him credit. Wilson Contreras' play in the eighth, while well, we don't know if it actually was a tag, that's still a fantastic play. Baez made a great play defensively to take a runaway in the first. Amora made a couple good defensive plays. I, I can't take the Cubs were the ones that also got – Russell got the big hit. I mean, they – while the Cubs didn't get a lot of their runs on hits, they made the Nats make mistakes, and, and that alone is good enough to deserve a win in my book. A couple people are asking whether Dusty's gone after this. The answer is no. Mm. I, I know you kind of feel differently about it. But. It's not that – it's not – again, I like Dusty. I think he deserves to stay. I don't think he's going to stay. I think there was a lot of stuff in a one-run game you can pick and choose, and there was more stuff that mattered, whether it was Le the, the leash on Geo, not warming up Tanner Roark, even though he's was, was pitching game one that never happened. Double, not pinch hitting Matt Wieters with bases loaded in the sixth. Double switching with Jose Lobaton, which made it even worse, even though Lobaton got a hit. 
that made look bad. You had Lynn on the bench. You had Kendrick on the bench. Uh, letting Scherzer basically continue to pitch out there and not get anybody up immediately when Max was struggling. There's seven or eight things you can look at, and I'm sorry. I mean, the bats did oh, wake yeah. up. The bats did wake up, and I, I hate calling people jobs. I so bad want Dusty Baker to finally get that World Series, but I, somebody's got to. I mean, this is the fourth NLDS loss in the last six years. I, something's got to change with the squad because they're just going to keep losing games like this. We know that he's not a great in-game tactician, but there are very few good in-game tacticians. And even and even Madden at time looked overmatched. Same thing that happened last year in Game 7 of the World Series. It's one of the things I talked about in the keys to tonight's game, or guess what? Whenever they played this game, who would you bring in? I mean, who, who would you? who's out there that is a better in-game tactician? That Again, that I, that I don't know. I sadly don't have all the answers right now, but right. I, I just get the feeling, Ron, that there's going to be a fall guy for this. I mean, you you can't win 97 games every year and keep losing in the first round. Yeah, Seth Rizzo's not going anywhere. Mike, Mike this th there's no blame on Mike Rizzo. Mike, Mike he, Rizzo. He's put together a great roster. He's put good players together. He made the trades he had to make, and the trades fared well. Brandon Kinsler had an, an okay game. Sean Doolittle was great the entire series. Matt, give Ryan Madsen credit. That guy threw 30 pitches yesterday and looked fantastic for right. an inning in two thirds. Yeah, there would be no game five of the series without. Um, without he, got, he brought Matt Albers in. Yeah, twice. Twice. I, I can't. I can't blame Mike Rizzo. He's done. He's done a great job. I can't blame Mike Rizzo for something. I blame the, the players, and I don't have an answer. I don't have an answer to who, but. There's something with that group. And they keep saying not everybody was here. It's getting to the point where people are here. Something, something's got to change with that, that mindset. And you would think Dusty would be the one to get the confidence in them. And they just don't have any. Um, let's see. If Dusty goes, Chris Lacey asks who replaces him. Could Rod Garden hire be an option if the Red Sox pass mm, on him? You're gonna, go, you're gonna go old manager for another old manager? Yeah, no. And someone else asks John Farrell. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. I'll let Ron tell you no on that one. No, Sorry. a thousand times yeah, no. I don't have an answer. Maybe I'm wrong for not having an answer to who should be there. I, but but you know, I mean, that's the question that that we've asked several times when people have given there and and. Dusty is great at long-term planning. They don't win the 97 games without him. But clearly, um, there, there was times in this series where he was overmatched. And, you know, leaving Geo in too long. Pinch hit, I was puzzled why Robles pinch hit so damn early in the game. He's there for his speed and his defense. What are you wasting it back for there? Yeah, it was really between Robles or Defoe in the fourth. And well, why don't Robles, you, you would have needed him or Goodwin for defense. Which right. Which they bit them in the butt because Worth lost that ball in the lights that led to a run. Um, the, the, the other thing, if you, if, if you don't retain Baker, is that you pretty much lose everyone else on the staff. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Lopes is a Baker guy. Chris Byer is a Davy guy. Um, don't know. Mike Maddox has no interest in managing. He'd be snapped up in. I, I think he's a Baker seconds. guy. Um, I, I so you can't afford to lose all that. Rick Shue probably should go. He was was a whole over. You can't blame Bob Henley for any of this. No, and you could make the case that Bob Henley should have sent Jason Worth on the Bryce Harper double in the sixth inning. Right. Um. So there isn't any easy answers. Maybe something w once once we wake up and actually get to digest some of this stuff. <laughs> th this was a very tough loss emotionally um, because it was such a long season. Uh, but uh, yes, yeah, someone will get the blame for it, but I'm not quite sure anyone truly deserves to have the blame for it. No, Bob Henley's not going to be the manager. Um, He's managed before some. I think he's managed an affiliate at some point. I don't know who's down. Um, I, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, as far as umpires missing plays, you know, judo. I I don't think any of the umpiring crews in, in in any of these four series have covered themselves in glory. They have. We'll say this though: 
the umpires have a lot to answer to tonight on both sides. I thought the strike zone was poor on both sides. Yeah. Uh, so was Laz Diaz this last night too. Laz Diaz last night, but there were so many calls that could have could have changed the outcome in this game. Imagine if Baez is called for hitting Weeters and it's five to four instead of seven to four. Or uh, I think if Lobotone's called safe, Trey Turner with all the momentum the Nats had would have tied that game. He had a two one count. John the third asks. You also start to wonder with Taylor playing so well. Rizzo more have to let Harper walk. In free agency uh, but with Robles Taylor need. I no, I think they'll make every effort to sign Harper. I think they'll I think this is more likely to get him to trade Michael Taylor. Yeah, I agree with that. Um if not, then because I don't think Robles is the opening day center is the is makes the opening day roster next year. No. Uh he'll I think he'll at least start in triple A and get some bats there. He'll he'll hopefully head down to the fall league now. Daniel Johnson's there, and Daniel Johnson did have two hits today, so at least he did something good in the fall. Yeah, I, th- I think the opening day outfield next year is is Eaton, Taylor, and Harper. Uh, you know, Eaton, it's easy to move Eaton now into the, into left field. Uh, Seth asks, if the Nats had been in a tight division race, do you think they would have been better prepared? Yeah, I do, actually. Um, okay. they, haven't, they really haven't played a meaningful game since July until the series started. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, yes – there was the games against the Cubs and the Dodgers, but as far as as they really hadn't had much to play for, that was July fourth was the last time that they were not ten games up in the division, and so yes, it makes a huge difference. Uh, I, I think that played a difference, Ron. But I'll I'll try to make this as simpler than that. You played a team that's the defending champions. You played a team that even down four to one knew they weren't out of it. A lot of teams down four to one in that situation bow out and they don't quit. I mean, there's a resiliency with that team. There's a reason why they're heading to the NLCS for the third straight year. There's a reason why they won the title last year coming from three, one down in the series for the second straight year. You ran into the wrong team. Yeah. And sometimes that's, sometimes that's just the luck you run into. I don't think playing competitive teams in September really changes that. I just think this was a bad matchup from the get-go because this was the defending champions, and you're going to have to do a little bit more than normal to beat that team and to get them to quit. And they just kept kind of punching, counter punching, counter punching, to, to counter punching till you gave in. Chris Lacey brings up a good point. Uh, okay. What about Phil Nevin as a possible replacement? And he's, you know, he's a young. They interviewed, they interviewed Phil Nevin the last time. Uh, I, Nevin is going to be a good manager for somebody. Um, if Lloyd McClendon doesn't get interviewed for the job in Boston. I think he'd be a good uh, good manager. Uh, DeMarlo Hale, Alex Cora. I mean, there are young – I love Alex Cora. I think he's going to be a great manager somewhere. What, somebody's hiring him this year, and he's going to be great, I think. Uh, Judo asks, I think we got to keep Michael A. If we trade him as good of a series, it would be a horrible sell. Who would you get? A fifth starter is who you'd get for Taylor. Um. Because they don't have a fifth starter right now, Eric Fetty is not quite ready yet. You're not going to bring Edwin Jackson back, and you know maybe AJ Cole could win the position there. But you know that you don't have Joe Ross all next year. You could sign JD Martinez. You could sign JD Martinez, which could kind of deliver some of these issues. And also, don't forget, Kinsler's a free Brandon Kinsler's a free agent, and so you you might need a bullpen piece. Um. No, Ray Knight is not going to be a manager. He was a terrible <laughs> manager. No, seriously, he was a manager with the Cincinnati Reds, and he absolutely was terrible. Chris Lacey says uh, uh, McClendon could be with the Tigers, and I think that would be a good good place for him to be. And no, I do not want Brett Osmus here. Uh, what if Harper- He's going to be with your team when it, uh, I think. Dombrowski's just gonna. He's gonna, he's gonna yeah, I'd love to see him out in Boston. I don't want to see Garden hire either. Uh, what if Harper walks? Well, you know, I think that's what you might look back on on this window and wonder what you could have did. I, the more, the more first round losses you have, and we've been talking about this, the more people are gonna get in that guy's ear when Harper wants to stay, and more people in the ear are gonna say, "Why do you stay there? They don't know how to get out of the first round." Come here and you'll win a championship. You know, I when I said this to Ricky when I started last year. I don't think Harper walks. You know, I think if he says I want to go play for X, that there's a trade there. Um, 
but I'm not convinced the Harper wants to leave. Uh, no, everyone's tradable, Judo. <laughs> Every, everyone. I'll say this. For all the goodwill Geo had for the entire year, he gave it all away. Yeah, Nobody, was, nobody is ever going to trust Gio Gonzalez in a big yeah. spot ever again. Yeah. And that's me another thing, and you can fault Dusty for this, and I love Dusty for this. He tries so hard to get players their redemption story and their numbers and everything. Because let's be, let's be honest. Tanner Roark got screwed. Oh, Tanner, without question. Yeah, and that's without a question. that's a storyline this winter. I think Tanner Roark's pissed. He should be. That he didn't get in this series. And they, they, they put Scherzer in for him two years ago, and he had to go to the bullpen, and he did not like going to the bullpen. Now this. He, there's going to be a lot of damage control, I think, to do with Tanner Roark. Uh, okay, Gio's not going anywhere. He's cheap for $12 million. Uh, if Harper never got hurt, I don't think it makes a difference, to be honest. Um, uh, does he get his timing back earlier? <sighs> See, that? I don't think so either. But when you look at Harper's numbers this series, they weren't exactly great. Well, no one's were great. No, no, nobody's were great. I'm not, I'm not trying to blame Bryce Harper. Right. No, no, I know you weren't. What, he went four, four for 19. Could maybe having more timing had gotten him a couple more hits? It's possible. It, it, took him, it took him almost two games to find a breaking ball to hit off Edwards. And right. really after that, he did have a double night and just missed on the off the barrel from Quintana because that ball would have gone a mile. Chris, Chris Matt brings up a very good point. Can they can Washington realistically afford JD Martinez? And the answer is probably no. No, I think your your team might afford him. Um, your team affords him and Hosmer, and they're just going to go over the tax this year. Your team. What's going to? Oh, well, the Red Sox don't care. <laughs> um, what's going to ha- What's going to happen is that that readers who thought he was going to opt out before this pa- the, the season that just ended started. Um, is going to be a ten and a half million dollar albatross around Washington's neck. Uh, basically, you're trading a Harper salary for worse, so you're not saving any money there. You need to you need to figure out what to do with the bullpen, and you need a reliable fifth starter. Um, plus, you're going to have there's only three arbitration cases. It's uh, it's Rendon, it's Roark, and there was one other name that wasn't we- Taylor the other one. Taylor, surprisingly, you're right, is the other one. Making two point two million, I th- projected at like two million. Cheapest right. two million ever. Yeah, so um they don't want to go over the luxury tax again or the competitive balance tax, excuse me. Because it's a much bigger penalty. Right. Well, you know, Seth, that's can't happen because uh he's he's back because he figured Weeders figured he could just play himself to a bigger contract, and that's just not going to happen. And Washington doesn't eat contracts ever. Nope. So he's uh he's there. Could Jason Vargas? Well, I, I really don't want to get the, too much. Yeah, we're not going to go too much into the future here. We're not going to we're not going to play GM. Um, you know, there 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 there's some decent options out there. And like I said, I you know I think Cole showed enough at the end of the year. To that maybe he can win the job next spring. Um, uh, as Judah says, obviously I would prefer the Nets keep Rice, but the problems we had this series would have been there here with or without. I mean, and that's absolutely true. Um, and, and and on the other hand, I don't think the window closes if if Harper leaves. You know, we you've seen the future of this team. Um, they need to draft some pitching, uh, but, which they did. They spent nine rounds of it. Right. You know, I. I'd be very curious to find out. Um, I'll get to that question in a second, Seth. I'm very curious to find out in a couple of days just how hurt Max Scherzer was. Because he, I, I gave it his all. I mean that that's why I I had a tough time while I was tweeting the game to really go hard on Scherzer. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean you, you want guys to take the ball in that spot. That's why we got so hard on Steven Strasper before he made that start yesterday. We want guys to take the ball. I mean. It's is it going to take a dent on Scherzer's legacy? Yeah, sure. I think it has to. This year, yeah, still a great, it's still a great pitcher, but he'll his post, his postseason probably, record isn't good. He'll probably win the uh, win the Cy Young. Yeah, I mean, he's got a good shot at three Cy Young awards. I mean, yeah, and that's pretty good. Judo says the window looks nicer in the future with Taylor. Taylor's one of the few trade chips they have, though. 
as far as I'm concerned, unless unless they make the decision that unless Harper makes the decision that he's done here. The window is as open until there's a comp until there's a competitor in that NL East. Yeah, the NL East is god awful. I that's why I think you can shake up the team and still win the East. I don't know how you do it, but uh, Dusty for this is fed ba- federal baseball. It really hurts to lose like that, especially after what we went through all year long. And there's and there. I think you can call a season a failure and still say they were great memories. I mean, this was a great team to follow. I mean, they, they won 97 games. There were so many fun games that they had this year. Trey Turner's cycle, Harper's fight with Strickland. Uh, game two was, was awesome. Yesterday was awesome. Yeah. Uh, Michael Taylor's inside the park grand slam. Both, both, both of their wins in this series were incredible, incredible ball games. You you can have great wins and great memories from this year, and still be hard on this team and call them a failure. That, that, that's how I view it. I mean, it, you should, you want to have these expectations. I mean, that's what this team strived for since they came here in 05 was to have expectations like this. And to me, it's a failure. I, I hate saying that, but coming from somebody that roots for a team that was World Series or bust most of the time. I'm, yeah, the no, way it is. There was ex- there this this team was not just happy to be here. There was some expectations. And and you're right. They didn't get met. All they had to do was advance. All they had, you know, we make it sound like it's such an easy thing to do. Chris asks, uh, should Rourke have come in instead of Scherzer? And my answer to that would be yes. We were told, we were told Tanner Rourke would be available and he never got in the game. Right. Uh Seth asks if Ricky if you will follow the Nats next year. Yes. Um, I'm not going to stop following the Nats. Uh, I think they're a fun team. That's why I took the spot three years ago. I, I love the players on this team. I think there's still a bright future. And I will sure as hell hope that they win a, win a playoff series. Because you, you, all you D.C. fans out there, you deserve to be happy one time. Oh, and that's, what, that's, what made, that's what made tonight hurt so much. Because mm-hmm. I, I, I tweet with all you, and, and, I, underst- and I, I know I hate when you, guys get negative, but – then I sit back, especially what, while the fifth inning was spiraling out of control, and wonder what do these fans have to do to get one series win? I, I, I'm trying to figure that out. I'm not a Cubs fan that went 108 years without a championship. I'm not Ron that went for the Red Sox that went 80, 90 odd years without a championship. Yeah, but this is I one, don't know. This is one of two teams that has never made the World Series. That and the Seattle Mariners. I mean, next year starts their 50th year as a fran- 50th season as a franchise. I think they're better off than the Indians right now. I think if you're the Indians, you wonder what the heck happened where you blew a 3-1 lead in the World Series and you blew a 2-0 lead in the ALDS. I don't know where they go from there, and they have Francona. Right, and you know, and I don't think anyone questions Francona's ability as a manager. Um, you know, he's a Hall of Famer. I'm not just saying that because he won those with the, with the Red Sox. I mean, the job he did with Cleveland just to get them in that position is is a, is an amazing job. Um yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're not going to have really any answers tonight, and and I certainly understand why people are upset. But, we, but one of the things I want to bring up what you talked about, Ron, all all September you talked about they have to do the little things to win. Mm-hmm. They did every little thing wrong. They were three for ten, left thirteen on base. Cubs weren't much better. They won for eleven and left nine on base. But two all errors year. by Matt Weeters, a pass ball. A pickoff, 13 people on base, two men on, nobody out in the eighth, and Adam Lynn, who pinch hitting is hard, but Adam Lynn swinging at the first pitch and doing the worst thing you could have possibly did was ground to a double play. Took all the momentum away. Which stings because Taylor got the base hit, Lobotone got the base hit. That could have been a huge inning. Judo asks, uh, do you think the weakness of the division plays it to their disadvantage? They basically played four months of meaningless baseball and then lose game five of a do or die. They won um, every series against the playoff team the yep. entire year. Yep, they did. They had they had winning records against them all. Uh, but yes, I think I think having Dusty's, you know, maybe the grand mistake of Dusty the last three weeks of the regular season was trying to get people milestones because it worked for him as a member of the Dodgers back in the late seventies. Um, I don't think players are as interested in that now. And yes, you know, they're, they're, they're an older team, which I think works against them. And really, 
Yeah, I mean, they they there just wasn't that many big games, and when they when when they did play them, they played well, obviously, but. We sat through September, and it was like watching spring training all over again. No, they're not cursed. Um, Jason Stern had this. Who's the stupid person in the media that asked Bryce Harper who he wants to win the championship series? That is a dumb question to ask somebody that just lost the game. Uh, I hope the answers were something that, that I can't repeat. I hope it was clown question, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like what Bryce used to say. Joe, Joe Madden. Quote on the four run fifth, it was a bizarre world. There was no question about it. And the loss will take some time to get over, of course. The second inning was bizarre for the Nats. They batted around in that inning. Right. And, uh, Madden, and Madden walked Harper. Right. And Seth, I don't care there was a football game tonight. <laughs> Eagles won. That makes you feel better. Did they really? Yeah. Um,. But yeah, I mean, there's I mean, we're not going to try to spend. There's really no positives to take from this. I mean, there's some players that that had impressive years that continue to have impressive years. Uh, they need to. They need. To, and I know Matt Weiders is probably coming back. They need to fix catcher. Because yeah, you can't tell me that the Nats had a better backup catcher. That Adam Lynn's not pinch hitting for Matt Weiders if bases loaded in the sixth. Right, I mean, and Pedro Severino had a very disappointing. September. I mean, he, he, we don't know how ready Roddy Reed is. So they have that they have that question to answer too, but they, they need to fix catcher. They're gonna fix the outfield. Their infield's pretty much locked in place. There's not many holes this team has to fix. To me, it's just about how long does it take to get over this loss because it's gonna it's gonna sting. It it might carry in the West Palm in, in February. And that's oh. okay. You know, you want, the, you want it to sting. You want this to sting. Um, they need a fifth starter. They need a backup catcher. Uh, yeah, they don't. They don't have a move where I need like you need to go out and spend millions and millions and millions of dollars. Is what I'm trying to say. Like if they could fine tune things, maybe get Kinsler back on a good deal, because you can't. That bullpen with all three of them was fan, that tonight. I think might have been the first game they lost with all three of them pitching. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I mean, yeah. they have to keep that core in place as, as best as they can, and you have to probably hope that Weeders bounces back next year. And I mean, it can't be any worse, right? No. Uh, RK asked us this question: Was the Weeders bias play a challenge? We'll play no, and that's probably the big rip from tonight is that you can look at a small, see if the guy went off the base by a fraction, but you can't review whether the hitter. Hit to do with a backswing, and the and that was never the intention of the of that of the replay rule anyway. I mean that start that business started in the playoffs a couple of years ago, and they brought it in and just kind of ground games to a halt. Is it something Dusty could have protested? That maybe another criticism of Dusty that people have: he doesn't go out and argue. I mean, he's only had one ejection in two years. You're not going to get thrown out of Game Five, but I think Dusty tried hard to at least get them to think about it. Oh, but he should have gotten thrown out of Game Two. That that took a while for them to actually come back and say that oh it was a pass ball because Dusty did get the umpires to reconvene on it. Right. They just couldn't review it. I mean that there needs to be there are more plays that should be reviewed that aren't like if you tip the ball I think should be re be reviewable. Mm -hmm. If we're gonna have replay and we're gonna look at these little things, more things have to be reviewable in the sport. All right, so John the third asks, and we'll just last round of questions here because people have got to go to bed. Mm. Uh, is Lynn gone? Didn't his contract have a mutual option? It's Adam's decision what he wants to do. The Nets would love to bring him back for the Absolutely. five million, but Lynn has proved so valuable. I, and it's you know he might get elsewhere. I you know I can see him trying for free agency and coming back. Might need to invest in a reliable at bat or bat for first base with Ryan's injury injury history in H. Oh, I absolutely agree with that, John. Um, you know, I'd like to see Lynn come back. Um, but you know, I think there's gonna be some definite interest with him if he if he goes under free agency. We'll see. Yeah, more than last year. Um power I think is well, it's not as valued in the sport anymore. I think Adam Lynn showed that he could maybe be a regular on a non-contending team and perform because he was a semi-regular this year pretty much. Well, on an American League team, he could play every day because he can DH. Jason Wirtz's career is over, at least with the Nats. 
Yeah, I can't. I, I, you, I, you can tell those if those guys aren't dejected about how this game ended, they're dejected. They couldn't win one for him. Yeah, I I don't see a scenario unless Worth wants to sit on the bench for ninety hundred games. Um, and that's too bad. I mean, it's one of the reasons why the National League rules kind of hurt because it'd be nice to have, you know, he's a valuable resource to have around. All right. Well, I'm going to let you I think we're going to wrap this one up unless you guys have something real quick. So Ricky can try to write something while he's still wired. Um, this is tough. <laughs> <laughs> It's not just tough that that they lost, but that uh, let me uh, let me go live to you so I can actually see it instead of on the delay. I mean, this kind of marks a, a transition for us here at District on deck. Um, I think we can safely say that Drew Douglas is going to take Ricky's spot as as a site expert and editor, and and I'm looking very much forward to that. But. Uh, I was not looking forward to the end of the season for a variety of different reasons, because not only do I think that the Nationals were a championship team, but I have truly enjoyed these 13 months I've spent with someone I didn't know beforehand. And um, as you can tell, it's it's tough to say goodbye. And I think we've kind of reached the point now with the season over that that this is pretty much goodbye. And he'll still be friends. We will be lifelong friends after this. I mean, that's just how much it's meant to me. But, but, uh, but this is an extra, extra whammy personally for me to, to have the season end. Definitely. Uh, I didn't know what I was getting into 13 months ago when Ron was on, was coming to this team. They told me I was going to meet a guy named Ron and, I immediately messaged him because we were in a crazy situation with the site and <laughs> I'll, I won't give the details, but um, it's been so much fun. Uh, these post game shows have been so much fun. I can't say that enough. Tonight was fun. Uh, I can tell the Nats didn't want my time to end. They fought really hard. Uh, it's something I can say that they've done for the last two years. And 2015 being here was really a was a dumpster fire year for everything that happened that year. Um, but the last two seasons have been great. Uh, they didn't do what they accomplished, but um, I can tell you I've learned a lot being here. I was at Yank School Yard for six years and was not an editor, and I was really scared to be an editor. And I'm glad I took that chance. Uh, I've learned a lot. My next opportunity, I'm sure, will benefit from it. Um, I still get to watch my Yankees in the ALCS, so I'm yeah, really excited. I'm really lost for you. Really, I was hoping for a Yankees Nationals World Series. Um, then I thought I would get it when it was four to one in the third inning, or after the second inning. I should say I really thought I had it, but it's been great getting to know all of you here in the chat on Twitter. Ron's like one of my best friends now. I can say that. Like I go to him for anything, baseball or non-baseball. And he's there every minute for me. And I, I can't thank him enough. You guys are, in, I'm telling you, Drew, I know you'll listen to this later. You guys are in great hands with Drew. Uh, he's, oh, a, he's a rising star. He'll do great things. And just, don't stop reading this site because I'm not here. Because they're going to do fantastic stuff. I, I promise. Uh, I really am, don't have, I'm at a loss for words. Um, but I'm just going to keep saying thank you because I, these last three years have been so much fun and who knows, maybe I'll, maybe I'll see you guys again real soon. Well, we hope so. We really do hope so. And, um, I have a voice left. This is why we don't do two shows a night. <laughs> just, just in case you wonder. <laughs> so I don't know when Drew and I will talk to you again, at least in this form, but we will continue to do dot casts throughout the off season. And I think the two of us will probably sit down early next week once we've had some time to think things over and then bring you guys back to, uh, you know, to start talking about some of the things that, that we did, um, you know, that need to happen over the off season and kind of transition into that. Um, more importantly, you know, I understand why you guys, you know, feel like that you're cursed. You're not. 
And once you get over the other side and, and have that success, it's the best feeling in the world. It really, really is. I'm just sorry it's not going to be this year. But it will happen at some point. This organization does a lot of, of the a lot of right things. Uh, I'm with Judah. I hope the Dodgers beat the Cubs, by the way. I can't I can't deal with the Cubs winning again as much as I love my buddy Jacob at Cubby's Crib. I yeah. Can't, I can't have them win again. Shout out to Cubby's Crib. They actually came on shout, and won a game the same series. Shout out to Cubby's Crib, Rock's Pile, yeah. Rising Apple, all the sites that have come on this show. Especially Cubby's Crib because they come on and then they, then they don't like us after they come on. Right. But I'm they, sure they enjoy they'll it. They'll love um, us now. They'll love <laughs> us now. <laughs> Every site that we've tweeted with has been fantastic. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, around the foghorn, especially Candlestick Will, mm -hmm. uh, and and of course Dave Hill, a call to the pen. So, I guess that's it. My wife probably wants to go to bed since it is one thirty. Mm -hmm. You know where to follow us mm -hmm. at Rickinator five five five. I'm not going anywhere. I was not going there. Anywhere. And uh, watch for him at St. John's basketball games this year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Good night. Good night, everybody.